What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff, and have you ever wondered if there's a way to avoid banding on YouTube? Well I have, and I've done a ton of testing to see if I can figure out a solution. Now roll the intro. <laughs> As ever, this is not sponsored content, so be sure to show some love for the channel and definitely get that notification bell hit by your subscribe button. That's the best way to support the channel. This video really has taken a lot of time and effort. It really kind of has been the bane of my life for a few weeks with all the testing, rendering down and uploading. So your support really means a lot to me. Thank you kindly. The reason I wanted to find out if I could beat YouTube's banding is because I went out and got some nice low light shots the other day. I edited them, graded them, rendered them down, and they look lovely. But as soon as I uploaded them to YouTube, there was noticeable banding in the sky, and there really shouldn't have been. I shot in 10 bit, and then I rendered down to a standard kind of Rec. 709 8 bit file ready for uploading, and it looked completely clean just looking at the file on my computer. But once uploaded, banding. This says a lot about what YouTube does to videos in terms of compression. So I wanted to see if there's anything different that I could do and then hopefully solve it and pass my findings on to you guys. You guys all know what banding is, I'm sure, but if you're not sure, it's basically where you have a gradation in your video at some point, like uh, Blue Sky, for example. And if your camera's bitrate isn't high enough or your video's been through heavy compression or simply the device you're watching the video on doesn't display enough colors, you could notice some banding and that will come in the form of that gradation we talked about. You may notice some sort of horrible kind of blocky bits and it just, it'll look awful. So I started by looking at the export settings within Final Cut Pro to see if making them higher or lower made any kind of difference at all. Don't worry, there are similar rendering options in other editors as well. Here's what happened. Of course, when I wanted to view the uploaded files, I needed to do it at the highest possible quality. And it's nearly 2021 and Apple Safari still will not play 4K files through YouTube. What are we doing? Luckily, you can use Google Chrome and that will allow you to play full quality 4K through YouTube. There is a very good video by the YouTube channel Vector, which explains why this is, which I'll link below for you. So focusing on the render settings in Final Cut, the first one I looked at was Apple Devices 4K. Now the Apple Devices render settings are very efficient, so if you need a really small file size, this could be an option for you. One thing I'd advise when you're rendering down is to check that the video codec is always set to better quality. Unfortunately, when I rendered this file down, I did notice banding even in the rendered file. So to me, this is an absolute no-go. I won't be using Apple devices full stop. I'm gonna play the clip again, pause it, and just zoom in. What you're seeing here is the rendered file that I've dropped back into my project. I'm aware that because this video is uploaded to YouTube, you might not be able to see all the banding that I'm seeing, or it might be a lot worse. So really what you're seeing is not representative of the truth. So there is gonna be a certain amount of, to be honest, taking my word for it. I will have uploaded a higher quality file of this video that you're watching, so hopefully everything will translate. Obviously, I would recommend watching it via Google Chrome. That's kind of the best I can do, it's YouTube. Next, I tried the render setting simply called Computer. And the way to get to this is to click on Master File, Settings, under Publishing, it should be there under Computer, and God, be careful. The default video codec is set to faster encoding, so be sure to change that. This is another fairly efficient render setting. Note the size of 63.9 megabytes, and compare that to Apple devices, roughly 25. So the file sizes are over double that of our first example. I was really surprised by how good this looked. It looked really pretty clean, and I had to zoom in quite a long way to notice any kind of imperfection. And even then, I think it was just a touch of noise in our footage. Unfortunately, when I uploaded it to YouTube, I did notice banding. I did also try the Apple devices 4K and it was even worse. Next, I went into the mastering options and tried out the H.264 rendering setting. The files are slightly bigger at 72 megabytes in this example, and it's still considered quite an efficient rendering setting. But long story short, I actually found I liked it less than the computer mode once rendered down. And when I uploaded to YouTube, again, I found banding and I found it just as bad. Moving on, and next I tried the Apple ProRes 422 at 608 megabytes and ProRes 4444 at 1.36 gigabytes for a 10 second clip. 
Needless to say, both rendered files looked stunning. No banding, no aliasing, just fantastic. Frustratingly, when I uploaded them to YouTube, again, banding, possibly not quite as bad, but at this point, YouTube was really starting to cheese me off. I even tried the absolutely crazy uncompressed 10-bit 422 mode, again to no avail. So I would say at this point it looks like the render quality makes somewhere between 0 and 5% difference. Next I wondered whether the amount of noise reduction affected the amount of banding. The original clip had a small amount of neat video noise reduction applied, so I started varying the amount to see if that had an effect and then I got rendering it down and uploading. From this point on, I focused only on the computer and ProRes 422 rendering modes. For me, these two represented a higher quality and then a more efficient rendering setting to work from. First, I compared the computer mode with noise reduction on and off to see what sort of difference that made once uploaded. Looking at the rendered files, I found I definitely preferred the version with noise reduction. However, when uploaded to YouTube, I found I definitely preferred the version without noise reduction. I then had a look at three different versions of the 422 with noise noise reduction off, applied lightly, and then with heavy noise reduction. And it's kind of the same story, I like the version with the most noise reduction on the rendered files, but when it comes to YouTube, the more noise reduction I added, the more banding I could see. And this I think is interesting and very helpful if you're colour grading some low light footage and you notice some grain, aka noise, and you are uploading to YouTube, using some noise reduction is okay. All you have to do is use less or just turn it off when you have these kind of gradations in your scene. Finally, I wondered whether adding a film grain effect would make a difference to our footage. So I applied my current favourite film grain effect, which is actually within Motion VFX M Film Look plugin. And once again, I got rendering down and uploading and then analysing the clips. Here's what happened. So I experimented with adding different levels of grain and really from now on, I want to try and focus on the computer rendering mode. And that's just because it's way more practical in terms of file sizes compared to the 422 mode. I've been really careful with the grain effect within MFilm Look. I made sure that the Luma influence slider is all the way up and that basically makes sure that there's no noise in the brighter areas because, well, why would there be? First, I tried adding light grain on both the computer mode and then on the ProRes 422 mode Mode, and they actually both did make a difference to banding. The 422 mode did look marginally better once uploaded to YouTube. And then I tried the computer mode with noise reduction and a little bit of film grain, and this was by far the best result I'd had so far in terms of banding once uploaded to YouTube. I did try with heavy grain as well, and this really did break up the banding to the point where I couldn't really see any at all once uploaded. But honestly, it did just start looking like it was noisy footage. The last thing I wanted to try was something I spotted within Final Cut. It's one of the stock plugins called Add Noise, and if you go into that plugin, you'll notice that there's a setting called Blue Noise Reduces Banding, and I had to try this. Initially, I thought it looked absolutely terrible, massively reduced dynamic range, so I put it all the way down to just 2%. It still doesn't look great, but I thought I'd try it. And this had the weirdest effect on my footage. In this top left hand corner, I had that weird looking horrible blue noise. And then from this point onwards towards the light, I just had bad banding. So here's a solid recommendation for you. Never, ever use that plugin. You're welcome. I know that one opinion is that shooting in a linear gamma and a smaller color space will alleviate banding. But honestly, it shouldn't make any difference. All the clips were shot in 10 bit and then rendered down to a Rec. 7 and 9 file. So as long as our rendered video looks clean, we should be good to go. I did test this theory because I wanted to rule it out. This is S-Log3 that's been graded with Alistair Chapman's Venice lookup table. Very natural, really good lookup table and it's free. And then this is Cine2 with Rec. 709 color space. Once uploaded, I noticed banding on both. One thing that I'm anticipating appearing in that comment section below is people saying just upload to Vimeo. And yeah, I'm with you on that. I tried it. All of the clips look so much better because Vimeo allow you to display, you know, much higher bitrate files. But to extend that thought, really, we should be watching all of this on 10-bit monitors, which for YouTube, 
most people aren't. In the meantime, we should all have our fingers crossed that YouTube start compressing our videos less. So in conclusion, here are my recommendations for render settings, noise reduction, and film grain. Apple devices is definitely the worst in terms of quality. It's just too lossy. I noticed banding even in the rendered files, so I really would recommend never using it. Whilst not as bad, I'd also recommend not using the video and audio H.264 mode. It's still fairly lossy, and the file sizes are actually bigger than what I think is the optimum render settings for Final Cut Pro, and that is the computer mode. Whilst ProRes 422 and 444 rendered files look fantastic and would certainly be the best choice for anything but YouTube, the file sizes are just too large to be practical. I would also recommend against using either of the uncompressed modes, because for me, the quality was too similar to the ProRes modes and definitely don't justify the insane file sizes. The nighttime clip that I've been looking at is only 10 seconds long, and using the uncompressed 10-bit mode, the rendered file will be 5.41 gigabytes big. So... yeah. In terms of adding noise reduction, I would say that if you add a small amount it might be okay, but the more you add, the worse it is for banding. When I uploaded this sample to Vimeo, I found I actually preferred the version with noise reduction, but for YouTube, nope. Adding film grain had a very different effect. In a way, it sort of did help with banding because what it did was break up those horrible blocky artifacts that you find. Then again, it did sort of look a little bit like unwanted noise. So what I would say is adding a little bit of grain can help if you keep the grain size really small and you don't mind that sort of style. Anyway, that's it. This video really has been a headache. I just hope you found it interesting, if nothing else. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has hand-picked this video for you, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out shoot better video. See you guys. I'm behind this hole. This is because... Thank you.